Hey, it's winter here in northern Utah. The fly fields are covered with snow, but we're not going to let that stop us from having some fun. So if you've never had the opportunity to fly off the snow, then you're really missing out, and you need to give it a try. It can be a lot of fun. As you can see, one of my favorite planes to fly in the snow is a Tundra. It comes with big wheels that don't work too well in the snow unless it's hard packed and icy. Um, but fortunately, this plane comes with floats and uh, works quite well on the snow. In fact, there's a lot of videos out on the internet with pilots flying their planes on the snow. It's a great way to get started and if you have floats for your plane, I highly recommend that you give it a try. I purchased a set of skis for mine and it really makes flying off the snow fun. You don't have the extra weight that you do with the floats and the drags a lot less and it's a lot easier to make changes you just pull off your landing gear and you put on your skis because i like the tundra so well i decided to build a bushwhacker from flight test actually i built two of them and i'm anxious to put skis on them the one problem with buying skis is they don't fit the swappables too well so the type i'm going to build will work on other flight test planes as well and on the internet you can find all kinds of videos on how to make skis either out of plastic, wood, metal, and even this year on flight tests, someone posted a video with plans to make them using a 3D printer. So if you have a 3D printer, I'd give it a try because they look fully functional and easy to build. Since I don't have a 3D printer, I'm going to build some using an old method I used a long time ago when I first started flying. I built these skis for a small balsa wood plane about 20 years ago and they work great. I have this frame that I would attach to the bottom of the fuse lodge and I just use rubber bands uh, that I attach the wings to to hold those skis on as well. Since my bushwhacker already has landing gear, I only have to build the skis. But if you have a plane with no landing gear, this makes for a great option. The parts that we need to make the skis are really simple and very inexpensive. We're first going to need a thin sheet of plywood. To make a single pair for the bushwhacker, we're going to need a piece that's a 32nd inch thick and a piece that's six by 12 inches. The sheet's only a couple of dollars. You can pick it up at just about any hobby store. We're also gonna need a piece of base wood. The one that I'm gonna be using is a quarter inch by half inch, and it's two, two feet long. You're also gonna need some CA glue, and you can use wheel collars to hold your skis on, or you can just use hot glue like we do with our uh, wheels on our flight test models. You're also going to need some small screws. I'm going to use the extra screws that we get in our servo package. You usually get a servo screw that holds your servo arm to your servo and two small screws that hold your servo to your plane. But since we use hot glue to mount our servos on, we should have a bunch of these in our flight box. We're going to need two of these. We're also going to need some fishing line to keep our skis from dropping too far into the snow and causing a nose over and a couple of rubber bands. So grab your materials and let's get started. One of the first things we need to do is determine how long and how wide to make our skis. I can tell you from ex experience as a snow skier that the longer the skis, the better it works in the powder snow. If you're on ice or packed down snow, then you can get by with shorter skis. If the snow you're flying on is light and fluffy, uh, powdery, you wanna have longer skis. You also want to determine how wide to make the skis and uh, have a good balance between narrow and wide. Wider is going to be better to keep you up on top of the snow, uh, especially if it's light and fluffy. But the wider the skis, the more drag and the more weight you're going to have to deal with. Uh, you can experiment with different sizes to determine the right width and the length for your condition. For the bushwhacker, I've decided to make my skis one and a half inches wide and nine inches long. That's going to allow for a two inch curl at the front of the skis and still be long enough to keep the plane on top of the snow. 
you're going to need to make two pieces for each ski. So I'll cut the board in half and then I'm going to cut it to length. The piece on the left will actually be laminated to the piece on the top with CA glue. And by laminating these two pieces together, we can create a curve while the glue dries and help the ski keep its shape. I did the same thing with these old skis 20 years ago and they're still holding their shape and have not come apart. I have the pieces of wood cut out now and I've marked them eventually where the front of the skis are gonna be. I'm doing both skis together so that uh, both sets of skis will have the same curl and then we'll cut them out once the glue is dried. The next part we're gonna have to move pretty quick as the CA glue is gonna dry very fast. I've actually soaked these two pieces in water for about 10 minutes. Uh, so they'll bend a lot easier. One thing to keep in mind as you're laying out your pieces is you wanna make sure that you have the grain of the wood going down the length of the ski and not across the ski. This is gonna make them much stronger. And if you're worried about them not being very pliable, you should be able to get just the right amount of curve after you've soaked them in water. Now I've cut the two pieces, or I've cut out a piece of two before at a 45 degree angle. And I'm gonna use that um, to get the angle while the glue dries. I may use some clamps, but I really don't think I'll need to. I'm just gonna apply some pressure uh, while the glue dries. Now I'm using some MaxiCure CA glue, and this uh, gives a great bond and it dries in about 10 or 15 seconds. And because the wood is wet, that should make it dry even a little bit faster. What I'm gonna do here is apply the glue real liberally to one side of the, of the wood. And you wanna make sure you get as much as, as possible across the entire piece of wood. And then you're going to roll one piece of wood onto the other and smear the glue around as much as you can, um, trying to get as much glue on every piece of both sides of that. You're going to want to work quickly so that you can get the bend in the skis before the glue dries. So grab your 2 by 4 place it underneath there, and then just push down and hold it there. Um, you want the ski to bend naturally, so don't push too hard or you'll get a, a more of a sharp 45 degree angle. Just hold it there until it dries. I let these dry for a few minutes and they seem to be holding their shape quite well. So now that I have them glued together and bent in the shape that I want, I'm going to cut them into two separate pieces. There's uh, several ways you can do, that, do this. You can use a saber saw or a band saw. I'm going to use my scroll saw and they're so thin you could even use a hacksaw. So I'll use my scroll saw and make fast work on getting these cut into shape. So now that I have them cut out, you can see they're a little rough around the edges. I'm just going to give them a quick uh, sand. Just be really careful because they're thin. Now you can see that they're sanded and uh, they're ready to go. We're, we just need to start building the struts that are going to go on top of the skis. And I'm going to lay both skis down and stagger them just a bit so that I have the same level when I'm making the bend marks on my strut. I'll take my piece of base wood and I'll lay it on the ski just behind uh, the front one or next to the front one, and place the tip on the top of the baseboard, uh, even with the curve on the front of the ski. This way I'll know just right where to make uh, the tip of the strut land on the curve of the ski. Then I'm gonna take a pencil and mark the curve on the ski of the strut, and then I'll take it back to the scroll saw and cut it out. So you can see when I lay this strut out on top of the ski, it matches the curve of the ski. What I'm going to do next is cut the strut to length. I'm going to cut mine about an inch short so that if I decide later to shorten the ski, I'll just have to trim off the back and not touch the strut. Okay, now that I have the strut cut out uh, with the curve in it to match the bend of the ski, I need to drill a couple of holes in the strut. One will be in the center for the landing gear, and I'm going to put another one towards the front of the strut about an inch back from uh, from the front of it. I'll drill a hole in there for the fishing line. And then I'm also going to drill a partial hole one inch from the back of the strut um, to put the screw in to hold uh, our rubber band on. Now that I have the holes drilled for the landing gear and for the fi fishing line, um, I've also attached a servo screw to the strut. I use a little bit of CA glue to make sure that it doesn't come loose and fall out when the rubber band's attached. And we want to make sure that we have the screws mounted on the opposite sides so that uh, when, we're, when we mount them to the plane, 
They're actually mounted on the inside of both skis. I've also put a line down the center uh, of the skis so that we can make sure that the strut's centered and that it tracks straight when it's mounted on the plane. So I'm going to take some CA glue and I'm going to apply it to the bottom of the strut and hold it in place while it dries. I'm pretty confident that the CA glue is going to work. It should hold it just fine. I used CA glue on the ski that I showed you earlier and that's been holding for 20 years so I'm pretty sure that uh, this should hold um, for this ski as well. Okay, I've mounted both struts to the skis and I'm just doing a quick test to fit uh, and make sure that everything is in line and looks good. I've run into a slight bit of a problem with putting the fish line and the rubber bands on because the bushwhacker has these strut covers on them. Normally I just mount the fish line and the rubber bands about halfway up the landing gear and either glue them to the landing gear or put a collar on them to keep them above the ski. If you're mounting these on a swappable with struts, uh, swappable with strut covers like the bushwhacker or the cup, you're going to need to come up with a new way to hook the rubber bands and the fish line to the wheel struts uh, above the cover so that they don't inter interfere with the mechanics of the ski. And what I've done here uh, to the bushwhacker is I've run a piece of wire through the bottom of the fuse lodge. I used a piece of wire that we normally use as push rods for the control services, and I've tried to make a hook on each side to hold the fishing line and the rubber band on. If you remember in the build video for this plane, Josh put a popsicle stick just above the landing gear uh, on the inside of the fuse lodge. I drilled a hole through each of the popsicle sticks so that I get more support and it won't pull through on the foam board. I've ran the wire through both sides and I've glued it in place and I'm going to use that to tie the fishing line to and to touch, attach the rubber bands. Okay, I've got the skis painted and mounted on the plane. You can see that I used some wheel collets uh, to keep the skis on the axle itself. I decided to use these so that I could control how far they would be spaced across the axle and also to keep them from shifting back and forth uh, from side to side as it's traveling. This should keep them pretty true and it should track uh, very well in the snow. I've started to run the fish line through the front and I'm going to attach it to uh, the little hook that I've made right there, just above the strut. And when I tie this line on here, I wanna bring the plane up just a little beyond level so that um, the plane, so that the skis, when they're trekking across the snow, are pointed upwards just slightly and never going down. What you don't wanna have happen is, is um, as you're skis are going along the snow you don't want that ski to go any further down than level so I like to make them uh, tie them on so that the plane is at least level or slightly forward so that when the plane is level the skis are pointed up just a little bit and that should help prevent doing nose overs okay I've got the fish line run through the hole in the strut of the ski. I've uh, run it up around this little uh, bend in that metal there, and I've tied it here. What I'm gonna do now is just give it a little shot of CA glue, just to make sure that the knot doesn't come undone. Once that's dry, Go ahead and trim it off and uh, move to the other side. Okay, I've got the fishing line tied to that piece there and I've also got the elastic going around the screw, the servo screw at the back of the ski also tied up to the top. One thing that I've noticed um, is that when I created this um, and pushed it through the fuse lodge, I just bent it um, just around like a half a loop and I would suggest you wrap that around several times so that the fishing line if that piece does come loose I've hot glued it in there but if it does come loose um, your fishing line is not going to come away from that piece of metal there if it flips over um, so I would just loop that around several times so that your fishing line stays on and then an easy clip for your elastic as well and that way e even if this uh, little metal piece spins around in there, nothing's gonna come loose. 
You can see now that as the plane <clears throat> um, comes up on taxi, comes up level, the skis are still level, and they won't drop below level, um, so that you get it, you're not gonna catch a ski tip and have it flip the plane this way. You still get plenty of, of um, spring going backwards. Elastic will keep it pretty tight, but the ski will never go with that fish line there. It'll never let it go down so that you grab a, a ski tip. So the next thing we need to do is put a wing on it, put a battery in it, and see how it works in the snow. Well, it got really warm in Utah over the past few weeks and it melted all the snow. So I'm up here in northwestern Wyoming in Star Valley. They have some snow here. In fact, we got about two inches of fresh snow overnight. And it'll be perfect for testing out the new skis. And this will be the Maiden for the Bushwhacker. And the Maiden's going to be on skis. The CG's off a little bit. feels a little tail heavy. So I pushed the battery as far forward as I could. And we'll just have to see how she does. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps. Please leave me some comments, and by all means, let's get out there and have some fun this winter.